The study of Western art music is dominated by the study of master composers and big works that have been performed and studied hundreds of times. However, for every well-known topic, there are even more forgotten people, instruments, and works. Among such is the harp flute, a general term for a family of hybrid instruments based on the English guitar and harp. I found this instrument to be a fascinating look into an industrialized society. This instrument emerged in the wake of the French Revolution and the midst of the Industrial Revolution. I'm hoping that this podcast can bridge the gap on the sparsely researched instrument by putting it into contact with the overarching musical, social, and economic trends of Europe at the beginning of the 19th century. The harp flute is an often forgotten but insightful look into musical trends in a new social and economic order during the early 19th century. The growth of London's urban middle class in the Industrial Revolution allowed the harp flute to briefly flourish before fading into obscurity. Lute manufacturing in an industrialized world. The harp flute is believed to have been developed as early as 1798. It was developed by the Englishman Edward Light. It was a hybrid instrument that blended the harp and the English guitar. There is a great deal of variation with the instrument in terms of the number of strings and other features, but it generally has a front body and a trapezium shape, a rounded bottom, and a sound box. Harp flutes are beautiful instruments decorated with intricate gilded designs. These instruments reflect a change in instrument making caused by the rise of mass production. These instruments can now be made cheaply enough to market to the middle class and could also be produced in higher quantities. For the harp flute, this meant that most of these instruments were made of imitation rosewood and not the Brazilian rosewood they appeared to be made from. And also, the construction of these instruments was largely outsourced. For example, despite Edward Light um, inventing the original model, he outsourced his labor and the instruments were constructed by Alexander Berry. The industrialization of instruments can also be seen elsewhere. For example, in the year 1800, John Broadwoods and Sons were manufacturing about 400 pianos a year. By 1850, they were making over 2,000 a year. I believe that Light's initial success was made possible by a shift in economics and an industrialized post-revolution Europe. Brinkholder sums up this trend perfectly in A History of Western Music. He says, A new economic order began to emerge, in which the Industrial Revolution and middle-class entrepreneurship would eventually surpass the old wealth of the landed aristocracy. In other words, non-aristocratic people like Edward Light were able to capitalize on this new system and create their own business. Marketing to a middle class. The harp flute was aimed at a growing urban middle class. Specifically, it was aimed at middle class ladies in London. This trend was further enforced by the emergence of separate spears, a phenomenon in which middle and upper class women stayed at home. Being able to play music was considered a feminine accomplishment. The cheap manufacturing of the harp flutes made it very appealing to these middle class ladies. As Hayato Sugimoto says in his thesis, The Harp Lute in Britain, 1800 to 1830, a study of the inventor Edward Light and his instruments, he says, being moderately priced but excessively decorated and relatively easy to learn, harp lutes as liberal art instruments quickly became fashionable in the London music scene, especially amongst middle class ladies. Once again, the success of the harp lute was owed to shifting norms in European society. The growth of the middle class and the related development of separate spheres made it possible to market to a niche of middle class women. Lute variations and counterfeits, capitalist competition. The harp flute was also affected by competition in the instrument manufacturing market. Almost continuous developments were being made to the instrument, including altering the number of strings and improving the dials. There were several upgrades to the original harp guitar model as Light competed with other inventors to create the best-selling instrument. He often went back and forth between different models. For example, he had several different variations of the instrument, including the harp lute guitar, the harp lute, the British lute harp, and the dial harp. Other inventors also created their own instruments. In 1825, Mordant Levine patented his own instrument. Charles Wheatstone patented the Regency harp lute. And Angela Ventura patented the Imperial harp lute and the harp Ventura. Uh, there's also records of Light claiming there to be a number of counterfeit instruments. He warned consumers not to buy these instruments. I think that the element of competition indicates the effects of industrialization and also the growth of a middle-class consumer culture on the music business and the harp flute specifically. Light and other harp flute manufacturers had to compete in an open market. Lute music in tutors, an amateur instrument. 
Most, if not all, of harp flute music is aimed at amateurs. This makes sense since, remember, the main audience for this instrument was middle-class English women. Many of the pieces are arrangements of popular songs or accompanied parts. Others are original works. Some pieces were also written as duets with pianoforte or other instruments. Nearly all sheet music for this instrument was composed by harp flute inventors or composers. Rogue Music Online summarizes the typical characteristics of the harp flute piece as such. Published music consists of songs and instrumental arrangements and some simple compositions and variations, mostly in 1624 or 32 binary form with tonic dominant harmony. One example comes from Edward Light's introduction to the art of playing the harp flute in a Paul Lyre. This particular tune was called Dance and was taken from page 10. The music feels very tonal, natural, and simple, reflecting the classical norms of music at the time. The music has short, repetitive phrases, but it's not without delightful variations that add interest to the piece. I will link the video to someone playing this in the description. Another piece was Divertimento by John Perry, a harp lute tutor. Um, it too has similar traits, such as four bar phrases, and has very little dissonance. Overall, harp flute sheet music was simple and easy to play. These pieces are very representative of the harp flute genre, being straightforward and easy on the ears. The music was created to be engaging for amateur playing and to be formed in a home setting. The combination of a growing urban middle class and the newfound affordability of harp loops due to the new industrial revolution era techniques created a niche for this type of sheet music. This represents a new way of making a living for musicians. With the decline of aristocratic society in the wake of the French Revolution, many musicians sought more entrepreneurial paths, such as writing music and being an instrument tutor. While the music may not have been anything revolutionary, it is easy to imagine how playing or listening to the music could have brought people joy in their private homes. The Demise and Legacy of the Harp Loop Despite the success of the harp lute eventually faded into obscurity, the instrument was unable to compete with the superior abilities of the double action harp. By 1827, Edward Light began selling his stock at reduced prices and by 1829 had stopped manufacturing the instrument altogether. However, the harp lute family did live on for a little bit at least with the Ventura harp, patented by Levine Ventura in London. But by 1851, the sale of this instrument too had ceased, allowing the harp lutes to fade into obscurity. Although this instrument has faded from relevance, I think its story is a notable pinpoint that encapsulates the musical scene in post-revolution rapidly industrializing Europe uh, that was characterized by an expanding middle class. I have three main takeaway points for this. The first one is that this shows rising consumerism. The brief success of the harp lute shows a rise of consumer culture in the early 19th century. The instrument as well as the sheet music was marketed towards everyday people. It was affordably priced and contained features that would cater to a more general audience, such as the extensive decoration. The instrument was constantly being altered to keep up with the competition, but was eventually outcompeted by the double action harp. This parallels an earlier trend, such as 18th century opera only being fashionable for a couple seasons before being forgotten about. My second main takeaway point is an increase in amateur music making. Once again, this is a trend that can be seen in the earlier 17th and 8th centuries, but is one that continues to this day. The harp lute market was exclusively aimed at amateurs, specifically women. In my research, I was not able to find an example of a more elevated composition or a professional instrument. This shows the rise of music as a recreational activity. This trend has continued through this day, where increases in technology have made it possible to create music with just an internet connection. And my third main takeaway point is that new music markets were created for professional musicians. Harp lutes reflect an increase in entrepreneurship. With the upheaval of the aristocracy in the wake of the revolution, musicians could no longer rely on employment by a church or court. Musicians had to compete in an open market. They had to find a niche or specialization, whether that be for teaching, performance, or another market. It was in this era that virtuosos, people who specialized in the playing of a singular instrument, emerged. Edward Light and others specialized in designing, tutoring, and composing for harp lutes. Although the harp lute might not be as important as the piano or the lute, I think it's still an instrument worth talking about. I think it's a shame there's not more research on this instrument because it really shows how music was changing in the 19th century.